Now, the author and women's rights campaigner J.K. Rowling has blasted Lisa Nandy over her stance on trans issues, calling her one of the biggest reasons many women on the left no longer trust Labour. This is after the Labour MP and frontbencher said at Labour conference she would stand up for women's rights at the conference this week. If you attack women's rights anywhere, then you attack them everywhere and we will not stand for it because women's rights are human rights and human rights are non-negotiable. Well, the Harry Potter author then took to Twitter to point out that Nandy hadn't stood up for women's rights in the past, having previously said that trans rapists should be allowed to serve sentences in women-only prisons if they self-identify as women. Oh, joining me right now to discuss this is the founder of Standing for Women, Kelly J. Keane. We're also going to be talking to Charlie Rowley, who's a former government advisor, about this in just a couple of moments as well. Uh, Kelly J., thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having um, me. It is extraordinary to me how many otherwise completely sensible people in our political world, and indeed just generally speaking out in public, have the most absurd views when it comes to trans issues. I've always thought Lisa Nanny is genuinely one of the most sensible people on the Labour front bench, but if she genuinely thinks that someone who's been convicted of rape, that could only be a man with a penis, because that's what it means, uh, who says, oh, actually, I think I'm a woman, still got everything intact, think I'm a woman, that they should be put in a women's prison. When they say they stand up for women's rights and women's rights are human rights, I mean, they're lying, aren't they? Well, yeah, absolutely. Of course, they're lying. I don't believe for a second that Lisa Nandy thinks women can have a penis or that rapists, convicted rapists. And uh, specifically, the question she was asked by a feminist called Julia Long was, would you allow a paedophile rapist who'd been convicted for raping children, would you allow him, now he identified as a woman, into a women's prison? And her answer was, unbelievably, yes. Um, and that's because... <laughs> Genuinely, sorry, can we all just pause to take that in? Because because mm. a lot of time the conversation about this is sort of kind of esoteric, isn't it? Oh well, yeah, but trans women are women, and and you need to you know you need to respect and be compassionate. Yes, oh, okay, look, lovely. But when you actually put the logical reality of that, as was put to Nicola Sturgeon before her downfall as SNP leader, you know the logical reality of that is here you go. You got Isla Bryson, who's a man, who now says he's mm. a woman. He's convicted of rape, and he wants to go into women's prison. And you think that's okay? When you actually put the reality, of people, you expect people to back down, but but they don't. Well, they don't if their belief or their uh, whatever the mantra is that they're parroting is actually just a dogmatic um, nonsense. And that's what trans women are women is. It's just a dogmatic nonsense. Uh, and it's because it's not true. So when it comes to repeating these sort of silly things, uh, these politicians almost uh, don't have any choice. They've backed themselves into a corner. Once you say trans women are women, um, all lies, everything that you talk about on that topic will basically be dishonest because the fundamental premise of your belief system is untrue. And, you know, Douglas Murray said uh, that there will be a political price to pay, and absolutely there will, because here at Sunny for Women, I certainly haven't been OK with just complaining. Um, and then we were campaigning, and now we're going to be a political force and register a political party called the Party of Women that will be challenging these silly MPs uh, with these horrible beliefs um, who and they are, parrot this dishonest... They are horrible. I mean, they are. that's the thing. You, you said silly, but also horrible. But they are, they are both at the same time, aren't they? And what's something else Lisa Nandy said? Um, well, did. She, she uh, earlier this year, she signed a pledge card from the Labour campaign for trans rights that called on candidates... Um, uh, in the leadership race, originally, to back the expulsion of party members who hold bigoted, transphobic views. Um, and she signed a pledge that described Women's Place UK, an organisation which simply opposes gender self-ID and wants men not to be allowed into women-only spaces, like prisons, like women's refuges, places like, like hospitals, as a trans-exclusionist hate group. Since when? Since when is saying that vulnerable women behind bars or vulnerable women who are fleeing domestic abuse from their partners or vulnerable elderly women in a hospital ward unable to get out of their bed, that, that wanting men not to be in those confined spaces with them, that's a hateful view. Well, if you go back to the conception of this ideology, if you go back to when it was actually um, made legitimate, which was 2004 with the GRA... That's the Gender Recognition Act, yeah. 
Yeah, the gender rank. Once you can, once you can say in law that a man can become a woman, uh, all bets are off, really, for how far it can possibly go. And right now, it's so far that uh, we are pretending uh, transitioning children is, uh, you know, if you prevent that in any way, that you're somehow hateful. Mm -hmm. um, I repeatedly get called uh, Nazi and hateful mm -hmm. and a white supremacist for saying yeah. that women don't have penises. So. It's um, we are in a really sticky place. And obviously, with what's going over on over in um, Israel, we are reminded that actually realities mean something. And there is a there is a great price to pay for pretending that things that aren't true yeah. are true. OK, what what's your what, what's your best thought on what the motivation is? Is it these politicians? And we see it on the conservative side as well. Penny Morden saying at the dispatch box as a, as a cabinet minister that trans women are women. I think she's re now recanted, I think, uh, when it didn't go down too well in the Lori leadership campaign last year. But she said it, or assumed she believed when she said it. Do you think these people, I mean, are they stupid? Do they honestly think that a man can become a woman? Or do you think they want to be nice, they want to be liked? Do you think they think it's a vote winner? Uh, what, what do you make of people saying stuff which is quite clearly uh, so obviously untrue? Well, I think all politicians are looking for votes. Like, that seems to be the, the, um, the, sort of the, the motivation for most of the things that they say. They're looking for votes. And they're, they're very wrong if they think that people, well, normal working people are going to vote to put more men into women-only spaces. So I, th I think it's about voting. And I think when it comes to stupidity, I, I was really shocked with Lisa Nandy and mm. Angela Rayner, who are both really big champions of the trans women, a women mantra. And then Jess Phillips, who's normally so feisty and so loud. And she's been, she's been so quiet about this. In yeah. fact, she uh, patted herself on the back for trying to get this spousal veto, which it means that if you're married to a man yep. who decides he's a woman, that you can basically uh, prevent him from changing the contract of your marriage. So yep. you can say no to him having a gender recognition certificate unless he divorces you. Mm -hmm. So lots of women in Labour have been absolutely appalling, but they're not the only ones. It's right across no, the it political is. spectrum. Well, I'm glad you're challenging this. I'm very intrigued by the idea of a new party of women. And again, I've always liked that movement, you know, respect my ex if you want my ex. I think, I think women really should speak out on this. And indeed, a lot more men are as well. Thank goodness for that.